Understanding color theory is also really important when it comes to color matching ourselves and finding our correct foundation, um, highlight, contour, concealer, lipstick shades, eyeshadows, just kind of helping us figure out what looks best on us. So to understand that, once you kind of have like your basic understanding of how the color, the um, how the color wheel and color theory works, um, we can start to kind of understand how we can figure out what somebody's undertones are and therefore find their best foundation and best makeup colors. So on the color wheel, you are going to see um, it kind of sort of split depending on like the graphic that you look at, you're going to see an illustration of what warm colors are and an illustration of what cool colors are. So on the color wheel, warm colors are going to be reds, yellows, um, browns, and tans, really generally speaking. And then cool colors are going to be your blues, greens, um, violets, and like any kind of a gray shade. Now obviously when you're mixing these colors, that starts to change a little bit, but very generally speaking, those are kind of like the cool and the warm colors that you're going to see. Um, so that can help us in makeup, but then we also have to think a little bit differently once we do get to um, cool and warm colors in makeup because things are a little bit different. So it's important to understand the color wheel and color theory, but then you also have to kind of like, kind of like just change your mindset on it a little bit when you get to um, matching foundations. So it's a good idea to understand um, what cool and warm are in those regards, but for your purposes, if it gets a little bit confusing, it might be better to just kind of think about it only in um, regards to like what your undertones are, just so it doesn't get too confusing. Um, so as I discussed in the other video, um, your skin tone is gonna be your overall surface color. Um, and your undertone is going to be what's underneath it. So I think that figuring out somebody's undertone is probably one of the things that's a little bit trickier for people. Um, very generally speaking, your undertones can either be cool, warm, or like neutral or olive. So if you have a cool undertone, and so anybody can have any of these undertones, fair people, medium, deep, anybody can have these. So I think that's one common misconception is that like a lot of paler people are just going to be cool and people that are deeper, they're going to have a little bit warmer skin tone. Anybody can have um, a little bit warmer undertone. See, I'll mess it up when I'm speaking too. Um, but anybody can have any of these undertones. So that's one thing um, to understand is that it has to do with the colors underneath your skin, not the surface color. Um, so again, if you have a cool undertone, you are generally going to have a little bit more pink in your skin, a little bit more um, red or blue. So this is where it can get a little bit confusing because we learned on the color wheel that red is the warm color and now we get to makeup and that's all of a sudden cool. So that is why I think sometimes if you think too much to the exact like specifications of a color wheel, it can get really confusing. Um, so that's why I don't want you to get too hung up on that. Um, so kind of like switch your mind into like makeup world, I guess, where if you have pink or red or blue, you're going to have more of a cool undertone. I think a good example of that, um, people with really fair skin that are kind of like porcelain a lot of the times, generally, and it's like kind of like that rosiness, that's going to be a cool undertone. Um, people with really, really deep skin where you almost see sort of like kind of like a blue tint, that's going to be somebody who has a really cool undertone as well. Um, then you're going to have people with warm undertones, so that's going to be somebody who is a little bit yellowy, they have a golden undertone, or even like a peachy undertone. Um, and so a lot of times that I think can get a little bit tricky because I think that it can seem a little bit um, like that would just be somebody who is like neutral. Um, but generally if somebody has quite a bit of yellow or golds or peach to their skin, they are going to be considered a warmer undertone. And then we have our friends who are neutral undertones, which is also sometimes referred to as olive. So people who are neutral um, often have a little bit of cool and warm going on in their skin tones. And then sometimes too, um, their skin tone and undertone are almost exactly the same. So I feel like until you are physically looking at somebody who is neutral, you don't totally understand it um, but once you kind of see someone who is neutral you can kind of recognize like oh like I don't see a lot of other color under your skin um, it's sort of like level um, or it's somebody who might be a lot more olive so olive I think can get tricky because sometimes people who are a little bit more golden can kind of present a little bit olive as well um, but people that have olive undertones almost have a little bit of like a greenish grayish undertone to their skin um, so again, that's probably all really confusing, especially because it's a little bit different than what the actual color wheel is. Um, it's one of those things that if you have trouble seeing color or you're not constantly matching other people, it might be really difficult for you at first. Um, I color match people a lot. I used to work in cosmetic retail, so I was used to just like anybody walking in um, and having to be able to color match them. So it's something that 
to me makes a little bit more sense and talking about it can make a little bit more sense but for somebody that's not used to doing it it could be really confusing um so I don't want you to feel frustrated with it if you're unsure. There's a lot of really great resources out there now. Um, if you are just trying to color match yourself, um, I think Sephora has like something where like they can like scan your face and it'll give you an idea of what your undertone is. Things like that. Technology is, I don't think it's as good as like the human eye, but if you're totally unsure of what to do, you can start with something like that. Um, a lot of places will be like, I'm this color and this foundation. Um, what are my other foundation matches? I think there's like websites like that out there. Um, there's apps where you can try things on. Um, a lot of places will let you return things or you can purchase samples. So it's one of those things that until you maybe buy a few of the wrong foundations, you may not know what the correct one is. Um, but hopefully throughout this lecture and throughout this class, if you're in my class, um, that will all start to make a little bit more sense. Um, and then really quick too, I think sometimes the word complexion gets thrown around incorrectly. So complexion is sort of like your overall like assessment of somebody's skin. So, you know, for me, I have um, a fair skin tone, but my complexion is like I have some acne and I have some like spots and things like that. Um, so that's one thing that can get a little bit tricky too. Um, so if you're kind of like, how on earth would I ever know? Um, what my undertones are there's a few little like tests and things that are out there uh, me personally i like to just look at somebody and i like look for the color underneath their skin um and i like to just physically put the makeup on somebody and try it because that's really the only way you're gonna know um but i know that is scary and you don't always have the option to try a bunch of things either so there's a few things that you can do um one of the really popular ones um is the vein test i don't necessarily like it because i don't think that everybody can see their veins very easily um, so this is not my favorite thing in the world and I don't think it's the most fair test in the world but it is somewhere um, to start. So generally speaking, um, if you have like bluish or purplish veins then you're supposed to be somebody with a cool undertone. Um, if your veins are a little bit greener then you're supposed to be warm and if you have a combination of both of them then you would be neutral. Um, another thing, and this one's kind of silly too, but uh, if you look better in silver jewelry, you're supposed to be cooler, and if you look better in gold jewelry, you're supposed to be a little bit warmer. If you look good in both, then you're neutral. Um, and then there's two different things you can do um, with like fabrics. So one thing would be like the towel test. So if you have like a pure white towel and you put it close to your face, um, if your face looks a little bit yellow, then you probably have a warm undertone, and if your face looks bluer, then you probably have a cool undertone. Um, another thing you can do is called the drape test. So um, if you have a piece of white fabric and you have a piece of like a cream fabric, um, put those around yourself. If the white fabric looks better on you or you just know like I like to wear white, um, then you probably have a cool undertone. If the cream fabric, something with a little bit of warmth looks better on you, then you probably have a warmer undertone. If you can wear both of them and you feel great, then you might be neutral. Um, or you might just be really confident. That's the thing <laughs> with a lot of those tests is like, you might wear all jewelry because you love it. I know I personally wear whatever I feel like wearing that day. Um, so that's why I think those tests are like a good place to start, but I do think that they are not totally perfect. Um, honestly, the only way you're going to know um, is the swatch test, which is basically you have to try it on um, and you have to blend it into your skin. I see a lot of people that'll just like swipe a bunch of makeup on and pick one you will not know what it truly looks like unless you really blend it in. So if you just like swipe a color on your face and you're like, that's my skin, once you blend it into your skin, um, it could look completely different. You don't know how it's gonna react when it starts just reacting with like your natural skin chemistry and moisturizers you might wear. So it's really important um, to try it and blend it in. Me personally, I think um, one of the best places to try it is like right along um, your jawline. Um, a lot of people try to match it on your inner wrist. Um, for somebody like me, that might be okay because I'm pretty much just, I'm pale everywhere. Um, but a lot of people, your inner arm is a lot paler than what your face is or what your neck is. So that might not be accurate. Um, and two, you have to think is there are some people that um, prefer the color of their chest or the color of their neck to the color of their face. So if that is you, then you match your face to whatever shade um, you want it to look like. Ultimately, we just want everything to kind of be like a smooth transition um, so that you don't look like you're wearing a ton of makeup. The goal is not to look um, like you're wearing tons and tons and tons of makeup, um, at least when we're doing basic corrective. If you like to do that, that's totally fine. But for our purposes, we're just like a basic corrective makeup. Um, it's more about just making everything uniform. So me personally, when I work on people, I do prefer to match. Um, like I put a little here and I blend it down into the neck and I see um, how it looks. But I have had some people, um, like I worked with a newscaster before where um, her face is lighter than the rest of her. So she will kind of like paint everything the same color. 
and I think she even did part of her arms too. So there's different situations and different scenarios for everybody. Um, but ultimately, until you really get the makeup on your face, you're not going to know, I think, what's best for you. And once you start trying it, then you're going to have a better understanding um, of what your undertones are. And even if you never understand it, if you can at least figure out a few foundations that work for you, um, you can kind of go from there. Um, another reason that it's really important to know what your undertone is is so that you can pick um, the appropriate setting powder. So I think... There's like a huge mis huge misconception out there that you can buy those like colorless powders and they'll work on everyone. Um, from a makeup artist perspective, they don't. I think that is a huge lie. Um, I don't even really like to use totally colorless powders and I'm extremely pale. Um, I feel like for anybody who is not very, very fair, they just make you look, they can gray you out, they can make you look ashy, they make your skin look lighter. And especially when you're going on stage, um, the lights already take away so much color from our face. So we don't want to be making that even worse. Um, there are some people that can make colorless powders work when they're doing their makeup. Personally, I like to pick, um, you can still use a translucent setting powder, so it doesn't have to be, um, like color depositing necessarily and like full pigmented powder. But if you pick, like, if you're a little bit more yellowy and a little bit deeper and you pick banana powder versus using like a pure white powder, that's going to be more flattering on you as a highlight than if you were to put pure white. So I like to shop, um, for powders based on what someone's undertone is. And then I kind of go from there. Um, it's good to try to match it to the skin tone too, but a lot of times powders, um, I think as long as you can match to the undertone, especially if it's just a translucent one and it's not super color depositing, that is all that you need um, to get it to blend into somebody. Now, if you're working with a powder foundation, um, that's when you would also really need to make sure that the skin tone is accurate. Um, or if you have a foundation that's not quite the right color for you, you can kind of like color correct it um, with a powder. So me personally, my foundation, and I'm sure you'll see it at some point, um, it's a little bit too yellowy on me, but I have a really, really like neutral, um, it is uh, like a grayish white powder almost um, that I set my face with and that kind of like brings it to the color that it needs to be because um, it's sort of a like, yeah, it's it's a weird like kind of dusty I guess not like purpley but it's it's like a grayish color and that kind of helps bring it to where it needs to be so you can also use your powders to color correct too but that's another place um we'll talk more about powder in other videos and in class later um but yeah make sure your powder matches your undertone colorless powders are a lie in my opinion <laughs> I really don't like to use them um and sometimes I think they oxidize weird anyway and can cause a lot more problems um and so just to give you kind of a better idea again we'll pull up our nice little like color swatches. So I added some more on here um, just to kind of give you a little bit more um, explanation into it because visual things are a little bit easier sometimes than me just talking. Um, so I kind of did this to where I have like the cooler colors on top and the warmer ones on the bottom. So it's, it's a little hard to see because we're not together in person and they're not on people. Um, but you can kind of see this top row where everything um, it's a little bit cooler. These are almost more like a cool like olive because um, this one is a little bit greenish. Um, but it's like a very like kind of like bluish greenish. This is like a very like deep shade that has a little bit more blue to it than something like this that definitely has like a little bit more of like an orange and a red. Um, this is definitely I think a little bit easier to see. It's like a cool red shade. Um, and then this one down here is like a very very warm golden shade. And then we have one that's a little bit more um greenish in tint again and then we have one that's a little bit more yellowy so it's a little bit harder when you're talking I think skin tone to see those things than it is like when I'm looking at like yellow and that's clearly yellow and blue and that's clearly blue um so the way I kind of think of it is you kind of have to like take apart the colors and you have to kind of like take apart somebody's skin tone when you're looking at them and kind of look for like the color that is as this is like dropping papers everywhere if you just heard that um you have to look for the color that's like underneath somebody's skin so I think it's a lot of fun um I love covering tattoos and I love color matching people um I know it is not fun for everyone because I think it can be really frustrating but um again the best thing you can do is just try the makeup on um, I think so many people are afraid to be wrong when they're trying it on, but you can always remove it. That's what's great is we're not getting tattoos. We're not getting permanent makeup. You can wipe it right off if it's horrible and nobody has to know that you ever tried it on or put on the wrong thing. Um, somebody's probably all of us are going to wear the wrong makeup at some point. Um, sometimes in the summer you get tanner, so you need a deeper color then than you would need in the winter. If you get paler, that's perfectly fine. A lot of people wear um, multiple colors of foundation, that's also perfectly fine. I think there's a huge misconception that, um, foundation is just one flat color that we put on our face, but, um, as you can see with my face, I've got 
um, contour and highlight. If I am just wearing foundation and it is just powdered, personally I think it is terrifying because it is all just one color. Because um, I mean if you look at like your arms, your hands, anything that doesn't have makeup on, um, there's so many different colors in all of our skin. So if we just make ourselves one flat color, um, that makes us look, we don't really recognize ourselves. We can look a little bit flat. Um, so personally, I do think if you mix a few different colors on your face, that's always going to look more natural. I think sometimes people get frustrated or they feel like their skin is, you know, something is wrong with them because like, why can't I just wear one color? Um, to me personally, I think it is far more natural and far better um, for your makeup application to use multiple colors. Now, not everybody wants to buy a million different colors. Um, so if you get your one foundation or concealer color that's close to you, um, and then you have to use a little bit of contour or a little bit of highlight to even it out, that's perfectly fine. You don't necessarily have to buy like three different foundations and mix them all together. Um, but that's kind of like where this idea of like highlighting and contouring came in. It's just adding dimension back into your face because, um, if you paint your face, like I always like to use this example, like if you paint your face solid pink and you just leave it like that, it's a little weird because you're all just one flat color. Um, and that's how I feel about just using like one shade of foundation. Um, so yeah, so I have a lot of people who get upset when they have to mix colors or they feel like something is wrong with their skin or like their skin tone is bad or something. Um, but personally, I think it's great to have to mix more colors. I think um, it makes you kind of like a better artist in general because you kind of have to like figure out how things kind of work together better. And two, I just think it makes you look more natural. Um, you look more like yourself that way. Um, and really the colors that are out there in the makeup industry, they are just generalized what they think people are. Everybody's skin is going to be different, so it's perfectly fine and perfectly normal. Um, and I think the right thing to do to have to mix colors so that you can look like you and not just like you're wearing makeup. So hopefully um, this helps make undertones and like color theory and undertones and foundation matching um, make a little bit more sense. It's a tricky process, but the more you practice it, the easier it will get for you.